we will not go down this way. for starting um, this bar of the Mercury was uh, mostly because I found that in, in, in Kaohsiung there's not many places for indie bands to play and uh, you know, I've loved music for all my life and I just couldn't find places where I could go see bands in, in Kaohsiung so that would, that would be the main motivation for, for starting the Mercury We've been open for over three years now, and, and actually now we don't have to make phone calls anymore to, to chase bands down. They actually, they're calling us now because the Mercury's name is out there now, and they know that we, uh, we pay the bands fairly, um, we treat them well, and it's, it's a decent venue. And, you know, we, we actually honestly genuinely care about uh, the scene as a whole. If I never came to Asia, I don't think I would be running uh, Coming here not only gave me the opportunity to learn about my own culture and, and learn to speak Chinese and learn to read and write Chinese, but um, it's given me the opportunity to open this place because the, the indie scene is, is uh, so underdeveloped right now. So it just it just happened by accident, really. I just started out, you know, going to see bands and then eventually writing magazine articles about them and eventually making a film. That being said, it, it is you know a lot easier to start a business here than back in the West. Um, so for that, yeah, I'm, I'm very uh, I'm very fortunate actually that, uh, like I said, it was just I think it's just fate that I that I opened this place. I guess we got started on, uh, in Kending in the south on the beach, uh, a great night market um, and uh, we thought burritos would be a really good thing to sell at the night market there. It was a lot of work, you know, going down every weekend and, and we thought that it uh, would uh, be a good idea to bring it back to the city in Kaohsiung and make it a full-time full -time business. I think one of the biggest mistakes people make are going too big too quickly. <laughs> yeah, and we. And most people that I know that have failed have usually done that. Kaohsiung has changed, uh, I guess, overall pretty extraordinarily <laughs> in the last 10 years. And so, yeah, the food has as well. I mean, there's been every, every year there's, you know, numerous restaurants that come and go. And uh, now I would say that there's, there's, there's a good variety of food. There's, there's a lot more than there was. Business-wise, uh, the markets are very friendly to startup businesses there's very low regulations and restrictions um, and so it's easy for you to get to get started and so that, that, that I like a lot and the people are also very very honest open there's a lot of good things about uh, doing business here and, and of course I love the country and we, li we have a place in, in Taiwan on the east coast in the mountains and the ocean it's paradise man. It's paradise so you know, we've we've worked really hard. Uh, we made a lot of mistakes, but you know, I think another thing that other people may tend to uh, forget is that you know we work as a team, and uh, I couldn't do it without her, and she couldn't do it without me. So it's very much a, <laughs> a partnership. What's going on, everybody in Taiwan? This is Ludacris reporting live from the Consumer Electronics Convention here in Vegas. We introducing new electronics. We talking about the cutting edge of innovation. I'm just gonna let the cameraman show you exactly all the different styles and designs that we have on set right now. I really didn't even think that I would be able to do any sort of business here in Taiwan because of you know being such a different culture. I don't speak Mandarin, and uh, so I was just more focused on 
getting my own product out. The great thing about Kaohsiung in particular and Taiwan is there are a lot of entrepreneurs here, so a lot of people starting their own business, and I was able to um, help them, and they were able to help me because I was able to do commercials for them or little ads that got me some recognition. You have the language barrier, but then you also have the the just the culture, cultural differences, and uh, you know, for me, somebody who likes to write and and uh, really use my words, that doesn't necessarily translate when you go to Chinese because then they're, you know, it's not funny or, or it doesn't make sense. So just finding that balance, uh, but, it, but it's also good. Like I said, you, you fail and then uh, you find somebody else that has those talents, you know, so I'm able to find other Chinese writers and other people that kind of give me that other perspective of, of how they look at advertising, how they look at movies and what they're looking for out of that. So. As a Canadian uh, living in Taiwan, this has been uh, a kind of renaissance place for me. And I think for the rest of my life, it will be very, very important for that reason. Because uh, like uh, I've said before, this is where I'm, I'm, able, I'm able to find my voice. It's just been a really great, great place for that. A really great place for inspiration. And there's just life, like, you know, uh, everywhere in Asia that I've ever gone. It's just like there's always moving, they're always doing crazy things and you always see something new every day which is good for your brain as well to keep it active and uh, even doing the same walk every day you still see new stuff all the time that just sparks and you never know which spark is going to lead to some great piece of art. So that's what I really really love about living here.